there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Spring 1940. Hitler's armored forces smash their way across Western Europe, and the deadly age of the German Panzer Corps begins. All across the Third Reich, thousands sign up, eager to join the Fatherland's legions of mighty armored warriors. All of us young soldiers were hoping to get to the front. But it is not long before these idealistic adventurers come face to face with the harsh reality of tank warfare. We fought every day and were always in action and had seen a lot of people die. This is the story of one young German's fight for survival as he battles his way through some of history's greatest tank battles. This is when I lost my faith in God. thunder across Belgium, Holland, and France, crushing everything in their path. In just six weeks, Hitler's armies conquer all of Western Europe. The Blitzkrieg, a fast, mobile lightning war led by masses of heavy armor, is unprecedented and redefines modern warfare. The stunning success of the German armor fuels Hitler's propaganda machine. Panzer commanders like Heinz Guderian and Erwin Rommel become celebrities. The Third Reich has found its new heroes. Panzers were in the tradition of the cavalry, the dashing, the attacking, the riding over the open field. And the National Socialists were very keen on promoting this image of a modern weapon, of modern warfare style. So yes, young men tried to get in there. One of them is 18-year-old Ludwig Bauer, who joins the Panzertruppen in late 1940. All us young soldiers were hoping to get to the front. But first, we were ordered to Putlos, where we underwent more intense tank training. Training was extremely exhausting, both physically and mentally. And I took to it like a duck to water. And after that training was over, we got deployed to the front. In early 1941, Bauer and thousands of tankers like him are ordered eastward, part of a massive buildup of men and machines. And on June 22nd, after massing over 3 million soldiers and almost 3,600 tanks, Hitler launches Operation Barbarossa, the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. We fought constantly and were always fully in action. There were tank battles and infantry battles every day. In the initial stage of the attack, German mobile tactics and superior armor easily overwhelms the Soviet defenders. But as the Germans press their attack deeper into the motherland, Soviet resistance intensifies. The Russians never gave up, no matter how hopeless the situation was. It was sometimes incomprehensible to us, stubborn. By the fall of 1941, Operation Barbarossa begins to fizzle. 
After 15 weeks of heavy fighting, the Red Army finally slows the German advance on Moscow. Hitler is determined to seize the capital before winter and orders one last push to finally break the Soviet defenders. But the invasion has cost both sides tremendously. Some German divisions have lost almost 50% of their original invasion force, and the Red Army is holding on by a thread. To protect their capital, the Russians have only 700 light tanks. 100 T-34 medium tanks, and only 47 of their powerful KV-1 heavy tanks, while the Germans attack with 1,000 medium tanks and over 500 light tanks. Most of these, the antiquated Panzer II. Originally designed as a stopgap while other tanks were developed, the Panzer II is modestly equipped with a light 20 millimeter gun and only 35 millimeters of frontal armor and is no match for the more robust Soviet tanks. Piloting one of these outmoded tanks into battle is fledgling Panzer trooper Ludwig Bauer, who attacks the southern anchor of Moscow's defensive line at the industrial city of Tula. Tula was a very big city with a major tank industry, and the city was protected by a large tank ditch. And the problem was that apparently the tank ditch was built in a way that no tank was able to drive across it or through it. Overnight, we received the order that about eight or nine tanks should be laden with logs on their rear end. When the attack started at dawn, those tanks started to drive towards the tank ditch. It was a distance of about 1,200 to 1,500 meters. And the tanks drove towards the tank ditch at top speed. And one of the worst artillery attacks I have ever encountered followed. The Russians shot as much as their barrels were able to. Upon reaching the tank ditch, the tanks turned around. The turret crew would get out and chop off the ropes with an axe. And the logs fell down right into the tank ditch. And the next group of tanks were able to drive over top of them. It was a great adventure, all the more because one of the tanks ended up driving into the ditch. It was covered with the remaining logs, and they had to stay in there until the evening, and all the other tanks drove over them. And then all of the tanks drove uphill towards the outskirts of town. I drove over those logs as well with my Panzer II. And when I got to the top of the hill, I took a direct hit. It probably was a KV-1, so a 7.62, the famous Russian gun. The tank caught fire immediately. I was able to jump out of the turret, but my driver and the radio operator burned to death inside the tank. I had five bits of shrapnel in my thigh, one in my knee and one in my eye, so I was, I was just lying there. My comrades carried me out of this hellfire. Ludwig Bauer is evacuated to a hospital in Orel, and over the next few months while he recuperates, he is joined by a never-ending stream of fellow soldiers, all victims of Hitler's failing Operation Barbarossa. 
And although the offensive costs the Germans over a million men, for fledgling tankers like Bauer, the war on the Eastern Front is only just beginning. Convinced nothing can stop his mighty panzers, Hitler unleashes a massive offensive against the Soviet Union, and so begins the largest invasion in history. But after six months of desperate fighting, with four million men on both sides killed or wounded, Barbarossa fails. And Hitler's war machine comes to a freezing halt in the Russian winter. The first winter was horrible. I think we lost more men due to the frost during this first winter than we did due to the enemy. In fact, lots of soldiers had frostbite on legs, hands, ears and noses. These were the worst injuries, in fact. I think the weather probably helped us, because German troops were not ready to have military actions in freezing cold conditions. So General Frost helped us. The Germans in the winter of 1941 had a big problem. Barbarossa had failed. They had over one million casualties. They were down to 50% of their strength. So Adolf Hitler wanted to find a new way and to continue fighting against the, the Soviet Union, despite the fact that the Wehrmacht at this point wasn't a suitable tool anymore. Undeterred by his losses, Hitler prepares for a massive spring offensive, codenamed Operation Blue. His troops will attack Soviet positions all along the front, stretching from the Caucasus 900 kilometers north to the city of Voronezh. The German high command sends tens of thousands of reinforcements to the Eastern Front, including Ludwig Bauer, now recovered from wounds he received in the previous year's fighting at Tula. In the Deutschen Armee, we had the big advantage in the German army that the wounded soldiers could ask to rejoin their old unit. I was redeployed back to Russia to my regiment, joined my unit there, and the Battle of Voronezh was imminent. My company had been assigned to secure a left flank, and we saw 20 Russian tanks driving into the valley at a distance of about two kilometers. They said we had to let the Russian tanks come closer to us and then try to shoot them. The problem for our Panzer III remained the same. We only could fight the Russian tanks at close range. The angreifenden russischen Panzer oder russische Panzer nur auf sehr kurze Entfernung bekämpfen konnten. Because the cannon's performance wasn't good enough. They had just about enough penetrating power for the tanks of that time. But with the constantly increasing armor thickness, the penetrating power of this gun with a short barrel was not strong enough, and the enemy tanks could not be destroyed. In the summer of 1942, the majority of Panzer III's in operation are equipped with a short-barreled 50-millimeter main cannon and proved to be ineffective against most Soviet armor. But in an effort to improve their penetrating ability, many Panzer III's are upgunned with a more powerful long-barreled 50-millimeter cannon.
The Russians then made a move to the side and suddenly appeared from the left and were as close as three or four hundred meters. The combat started right away. I was able to shoot down a T-34 that was about 100 meters away. At the same time, my tank had been rammed by a Russian KV-1. The tanks were notched into each other, so that we were all very close. The Russian got one hit and couldn't turn the turret anymore because he ran into my tank two or three times. Then he pulled back to a distance of 10 meters and shot, and the tank caught on fire immediately in the engine bay. We got out. The radio operator and I wanted to get out of the burning hell. Bauer manages to escape from his burning tank only to find himself trapped behind enemy lines. And after three days of avoiding Russian patrols, he finally makes it back to his regiment. The stubborn Russian defense stuns the German invaders. And over the next few months, Operation Blue progresses very slowly, costing both sides tens of thousands of dead. The Russians had learned much and were fighting much harder than 1941. Each Russian man himself was convinced that he had to stand his ground at the point where he was. In my soul, I knew one thing. Whether I die or not die, I would stay on the spot till death, and I will win. They even let themselves be rolled over by tanks. It was sometimes incomprehensible to us. For Ludwig Bauer and his comrades, the hope of a quick and decisive victory on the Eastern Front is all but lost. They did not come to us as guests. They tortured our people, shot them down. They will get here over our dead bodies. In the summer of 1942, Hitler launches Operation Blue in a desperate attempt to complete his conquest of Russia. But after months of bloody fighting, the attack slows to a crawl and tens of thousands of German soldiers die in the face of ferocious Russian resistance. By the fall of 1942, the Red Army has taken the steam out of the German invasion. Now, all along the Eastern Front, the Soviets prepare to strike back. And to do this, they'll take a page from Hitler's own playbook and spearhead the attacks with massive armored formations led by their T-34 main battle tanks. The T-34 was a tank that was not very beautiful and not very sophisticated, but the Russians could produce it in vast numbers in a very short time. The Germans built tanks that were fine products of German engineering, but the numbers they could produce it were therefore very limited. Our tank was fast. It could change direction fast. Forgive me, heavy tanks are like cars on ice in comparison to the T-34. The T-34 is considered the best medium tank of the Second World War. Well armed with a 76 millimeter main cannon and well protected by 45 millimeters of sloped frontal armor, the T-34 has a decisive edge over its German counterparts. The T-34 was a great tank, of course. And we certainly had a lot of respect for it. 
By the summer of 1942, the Russians have fielded thousands of these impressive tanks. Now, almost anywhere the Germans choose to attack, they inevitably encounter scores of T-34s. We came to this castle-like property that probably belonged to a Russian Earl. A beautiful, huge park with a huge property and very neat. We expected to get some rest. Suddenly in the morning, we had an alert. And before we could even get everything together, the park was full of Russian tanks. And we got into a tank battle. If the target is moving, couldn't fire directly onto the target. Can we, uh, uh, can man ja nicht auf das Ziel but had to aim at where the target was going to. The commander in the turret had an aiming spike. And on the right and the left side, five little triangles at a certain distance from each other. And these little triangles helped to find the right deflection when firing at a moving target. Got seven Russian tanks. Seven Russian Panzer abgeschossen. And at the same time, the Russian planes were dropping bombs. And while doing this, we unfortunately ended up in a graveyard. And this turned out to be one of my most horrible experiences. The Russian planes and artillery were firing heavily on us. And while doing this, they had torn open the graves and the dead came out. Everywhere, half or three-quarter decayed bodies and skulls were lying around. On the tanks, there was a half-decayed leg, still covered in the shroud. All of us, we had to throw up, and we left the graveyard in a hurry, without even caring that the enemy was firing on us. And then we received the order that five tanks, including me, should leave the woods and should go down into the valley. And the Russians opened up an unbelievable artillery barrage. My tank got a direct hit. Right side, so that the turret was torn open. So, 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 aufgerissen wurde. And the commander, Lieutenant Rochel, had about 40 shell splinters from head to toe. The gunner had been torn apart, and I only caught a few pieces of shrapnel. The rest of Bauer's crew is killed in the explosion, but he still manages to maneuver his tank out of the battle and back to the safety of the German lines. But he is one of the lucky few. Operation Blue was a failure, technically and operationally, and their losses were tremendous. The German army in this year had losses up to a million, and they lost nearly 75, 80% of the tanks. The Wehrmacht was absolutely a shadow of its former self. There was nothing left. For Bauer and the other German survivors, the fall of 1942 will mark a turning point in the battle. 
After 16 months of desperate resistance, the Soviet defenders are finally ready to strike back. They were very determined when they were fighting. And they were tough opponents. There's no doubt about that. Hitler's war on the Eastern Front has been raging for 16 months, but his mighty panzer formations have been unable to break through Russian defenses. By October 1942, the German offensive has lost momentum, and the Soviets launched their own attacks all along the Eastern Front. The main strength of the Russian Army Corps was always the mass. The Russians always formed waves of tanks, and sent them forward as a massive hammerhead. As the Germans continue their slow advance in the south, Red Army forces defending Moscow attack westward. And once again, Ludwig Bauer is in the crosshairs. In October, my company was driving towards a Russian attack. The company in which I was, the first company, we were the Russian attack. There were about 30 Russian tanks approaching us. And we wanted to run into the flank of this offensive. For some reason, the company chief, First Lieutenant Bittner, informed us via radio, all commanders to see me. and all commanders of 10 or 11 tanks went to see him. And suddenly, one of the Russian tanks fired from the side. And all the commanders were killed or badly injured. And everything was upside down. And during the chaos, the Russian tanks attacked us from all sides. Shot as an immense artillery barrage approached us. Zum, zum Schuss, als ein solches Tagesfeuer, russisches Feuer kam. The Russians attacked with an anti-tank gun that was like our 88. One of the Red Army's most powerful anti-tank weapons is the 76 mm ZIS-3. Originally designed as a long-range artillery gun, the ZIS-3 has proven highly effective against tanks, especially when firing their deadly, armor-piercing, high-explosive rounds. The Russians had a hard time with these types of shells. The shell penetrated through the tank turret. It went right through the body of the gunner and almost ripped him apart right through the middle. Ricocheted off the inner surface and fell to the floor and stayed there as a dud. And then the driver came up to me and said, I refuse to drive any further unless this dud is removed from the tank. And 
I picked up the dot very carefully, took it to the hatch and dropped it outside, and during its fall, the shell exploded. I was totally exhausted, and I was just 19 years old when I went through all of this. After three more months of desperate fighting, Ludwig Bauer is given special leave. And just as he is returning home in January of 1943, his comrades on the Eastern Front are locked in the bloody climax of Operation Blue at the infamous city of Stalingrad. Stalingrad was a turning point in regards to the fact that from the beginning of January 1943, Everything went backwards and downhill. Many of my comrades weren't at all thinking about victory anymore. It was more like, how can we survive the defeat as well as possible? In the summer of 1943, Ludwig Bauer would return back to the front as an officer and find himself in a very different war against a very different and determined enemy. After their disastrous defeat at Stalingrad in January of 1943, the German army on the Eastern Front faces a massive Soviet offensive. For the next few months, the Russians pound the retreating Germans. And by the summer, they have been forced 300 kilometers back towards Germany. And we were, once again, fighting every day nonstop. The division had almost entirely run dry in terms of equipment and people. And there was talk that the 9th Panzer Division, that was my division, would be pulled out to undergo refitting. All the soldiers of the entire division were to be shipped to the south of France. But for Bauer and his regiment, their much-needed reprieve from battle is short-lived. On June 6, 1944, only a month after arriving in France, the Allies launch Operation Overlord, the largest seaborne invasion in history. The Germans are quickly overwhelmed, and throughout the summer and fall of 1944, the Allies push them 850 kilometers across Europe. But as they near the German border, Hitler prepares for a huge offensive in the Ardennes. And once again, the assault will be led by Germany's panzers. At 5.30 a.m. on December 16th, over 1,500 German tanks launch their attack. The German tanks initially catch the Americans off guard. Just a few short days, their advance grinds to a halt as the Allies begin to reorganize and fight back. And leading the charge of their counterattack is the latest in Allied armor, the M4A3 Easy 8 Sherman tank. The Easy 8 is armed with a high-velocity 76mm main gun and has 63 millimeters of frontal armor. But the Sherman's biggest advantage over its German counterparts is its ease of manufacturing, enabling the Allies to put hundreds into action all along the Ardennes battlefront. Sherman M4, you could destroy 100 of them, there were 120 more. 
We saw the tanks, the Sherman. I was in position with my assault gun. The Americans started attacking us with tanks. And we were able to push the attack down in a classic tank battle. The Germans used the so-called mission-type tactics. And the American army used the order-type tactics. The difference for me was substantial. Type tactics that the Americans used didn't leave any room for the commander. While the unit commander is being told what to attack, he is also being told how to do this. And the German unit commander was able to decide for himself. And this German tactic helped to achieve all the great results. Eigentlich die großen auch die großen Erfolge gezeigt. able to shoot at them from as close as 800 meters. And that's what we did. We picked them off. And in front of us on a hill, there were American tanks that were hit and were burning. And so I continued driving and was put in charge of one assault gun against maybe 30 Shermans. Gefecht geführt, ein Sturmgeschütz gegen vielleicht 30 Sherman. And I got hit pretty fast. Gleich wird sich relativ schnell ein Volltreffer. And my driver lost the upper part of his head. So he is sitting there with only half of his head. So that was it for me. By the beginning of 1945, German forces in the Ardennes have lost over 40% of their initial strength. And on January 7th, Hitler calls off the attack, and the Battle of the Bulge comes to an end. At this point, we already figured it was impossible to win the war. The few forces that have survived the battle retreat back into Germany and prepare for what will soon become some of the Second World War's most ferocious battles in defense of the Fatherland. After three weeks of fighting, Allied forces in Belgium finally repel Hitler's Ardennes offensive. And in March of 1945, U.S. forces cross the Rhine River and advance into Germany. Desperate to halt the invasion of the Fatherland, all remaining German units prepare to meet the Allies, and among them, once again, Leading a unit of Panther tanks is Ludwig Bauer. We continued to Antwerp, and there I had to report to a Captain Atario, a guy from Vienna. And he told me that they were expecting an American attack. And so I asked him where to position myself, and he said here and there. Position your tanks over there in defensive position, and you yourself will return with your tank, and you will take position in the middle of the village. So we took position in front of a shoemaker's house. And I have to say that we hadn't been able to leave the tank since December 17, when the whole Ardennes offensive started. And so we went to the shoemaker's house, lay down on the floor, and took a nap, and the panther was standing in front of the house. All of a sudden I heard shots, and Americans were shouting, Comrade, come out! The war is over! 
and all the different tanks that were standing outside the village drove in and I saw them pass by. And of course I wanted to save the tank. I made it out of the house by shimmying down the eaves trough and climbed on the tank from the back. Suddenly, five or six Americans jumped on the tank and I was sitting in the driver's seat. One put his head inside the tank at the radio operator's side and his head was maybe this much apart from mine and I stopped breathing and thought that he would for sure hear my heart hammering. Then he just left and the Yanks jumped off the Panther and were standing in front of it. And I thought, now or never. I started the engine and moved forward. And they jumped aside in horror. I had to drive about 20 meters up to the main road and I left the village. I got hit by three bazookas. And one hit the gun mantlet. It fell forward and the camouflage net closed the hatch. Das Tarnetz auf der Kanone hat die Luke zugemacht. And I couldn't see much. Und ich, oh, so viel konnte ich noch sehen. And on the other side, the tanks of my own company were standing there and a Hetzer picked me off. Ein von einer fremden, Hetzer, wissen Sie, ein sturmgeschützten Hetzer, und hat mich abgeschossen. I got hit and the Panther started burning. And I couldn't get out of the tank because of the camouflage net. I tried to get out and just hit the net, and I was sure that that was it. And I fell back and saw the flames going through the net, and I was able to tear the net apart and could get out. I burned my ear, my back, my arm, my uniform. And this was my personal ending of the war. This was my ninth hit and my seventh injury. Less than two months later, Soviet and Allied forces converge on Berlin. And on May 8, 1945, Nazi Germany surrenders. The war in Europe is over. Throughout the Second World War, Germany's Panzer Corps was time and again called on to lead the charge into battle. German armored tactics forever changed the way modern armies would fight, and a new age of warfare was born. But these deadly developments came at a terrible price. Between 1940 and 1945, the German army on the Eastern Front lost 50,000 tanks and 4 million men. For the Soviets, the losses are even more staggering, with an estimated 80,000 tanks destroyed and 7 million soldiers lost. And those that did survive, like Ludwig Bauer, still live with the terrible memories. At that time, we were all soldiers that were used to war by now and had seen a lot of people die. And so we prayed to God that he would make us win the war and that he would let us survive. I could not understand that we were praying to God to win the war and kill the others, more or less. And on the other hand, the enemy was praying to God to win the war and kill us. This is when I lost my faith in God. 